Tangle friends. My name is Annie Reiser, and I'm a certified Zen Tangle teacher as well as a certified botanical illustrator. Today I'd like to demonstrate to you a gridded tangle pattern in our Lunchtime Tangle series. We haven't done grids for a while. <clears throat> and this is a really unbelievably versatile gridded pattern, as you can see here. It's called Betwined by Peggy Shargle. And I love it because it looks so incredibly complicated. I, if, I, if I take a look at this, I, I don't even know if I could ever follow what I'm doing there. But if you break this down, just like all Zen Tangles, you can do this one step at a time, and it's just magical. So um, let's get started. I'm, so the materials we're going to use today are a small bijou tile. This is from Zentangle.com. It's called Bijou. It's a teeny tiny tile, much smaller than what we're used to working on. It's only two inches by two inches square. Um, since we're working on the Renaissance tile, that's this tan color, we're going to be using uh, a micron pen in the brown, the 01, as well as in black. And then we're going to do another color on top. Um, we're going to use this blue 01. And I always have my General's charcoal, white charcoal, available for highlights. I have a soft graphite pencil and my kneaded eraser. I also have this fun little um, eraser called the Mono Zero. It's um, from Tombow, which is great for erasing lines. We're going to be drawing a grid pattern just by sight rather than measuring, and sometimes you need to erase. So, oh, and then of course um, I have my blending stump, my tortillon, and I also have one for blending white. So that's it for today. In terms of our materials, I'm, I went ahead and gridded out a tile already, um, so you don't have to watch me. But basically, I made tick marks, dividing them in three. I did start with the corner dots, as is tradition in the Zentangle tile. So, and I do make my border this time straight, since it's a grid. And then I just use my pencil to make tick marks to divide up uh, about approximately into thirds, this area across and then the same way down. So I'm not going to make you watch me do that. I'd rather I have this one finished. And it is important to note that the grid should be done in pencil uh, because you want to be able to erase when you get so far. There are variations where you can show the grid line in the pattern, um, but for this today, I like to I prefer that we do it in pencil. So here's the pattern. Basically, you look at this square, and we're just going to draw a diagonal line from left to right, from corner to corner, in each of the squares. If you were very metered, and or if you measured, <laughs> you could actually draw a line straight through, but I always do everything by hand, so I'm just going to take it one square at a time. Okay, that's step number one. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to make some flat C shapes, both like a C and an inverted C. Watch, this is what I mean. So I'm going to start about here and I'm going to do like an arc or a C that's sort of flat. See how that becomes like a flat and then I'm going to invert to the same thing on this side and we're just going to try to stay as uniform with that curve and width between the middle line here and the other lines. We want to make sure to save enough space between the center line and these curved C's because we're going to be embellishing that with our colored pencils or our colored pens. So here we go. Take your time.
So simple. Step one, step two done. Now we're going to do turn our tile and do the same thing. So going from left to right, we're going to make a diagonal line in each of the squares. And we're going to do that Zen Tangle rule <laughs> of when you come to a line that's given, you stop, pretend you're drawing behind it, and then pick it back up again. So always draw behind what's there. So the next step is really very cool because we've got half of it done for us already. What we're going to do, we're going to do that same stroke where we do our C shape, right, our arc, go underneath what's given, and this time we're going to meet up with the line that was established on the other side. So let me show you again. Start here and meet up here. This one started, so we're just going to keep on meeting up with those lines that were given. So on this one, start here. So do you see this one is already given? And we're going to meet up with this one here. So we're just weaving in and over and under using the help of those markers. Um, so if I started here, like my pattern, And don't worry if you don't meet up exact. We're going to do some lively line that will help us kind of mitigate those little mistakes. No mistakes in Zentangle, right? It's not crossing very well. But that's okay. We're going to be cleaning that up a little bit with our color pen. So now I'm going to take the blue. And if you look at my sample here, you can see that I've got this blue line. This is the one that's on top, right? So I'm going to find that here. This one goes on top. This is underneath, on top, underneath. So I'm going to start here with my aura lines with my blue pen. And I'll show you what I mean. So I'm just going to start right with the curve and we're going to aura that curve on either side of that middle line. And we're just going to keep on auraing underneath as it's our tradition. And then just keep on doing that for all of those in this row, this top row. The cool thing is, this is helping us see where to go. So we, we want to stay here and then go under the bridge and finish that aura line. So basically what it ends up becoming is you're auraing certain, certain of these rectangles, right? But you're always staying within that particular road, if you will. Um, this one has to be finished out. Oh, 
always on the inside and I think pretty much that is it I don't think I missed any and then we're going to do the same thing whoops sorry we're going to do the same thing with our brown so starting here So now we're going to do some shading um, and one way you can shade or embellish is to make kind of a, um, a gemstone in the middle or a little perf and we can fill that in white. I know we've got the black cross in there right now but everywhere where there would be a little bit of a tuft on the blues we're going to make a perf or a half a perf. And to do some self-shading around there, instead of using graphite or color pencil, I'm just going to pull out some eyelash stroke all the way around that little orb, kind of like a sun. So my eyelashes are pretty close together and they flick out. You can either flick away or towards yourself. I think it's probably easiest to pull towards yourself to get that uh, fine line to feather it so when you flick you you add a little pressure at the start and then pull out and lift so that you have a lighter stroke as it comes as it rays out right flick 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 kind of gives us an illusion of a, a tufted fa fabric or if you do this a lot you can do it both directions comfortably and then I'm going to do the same thing with the brown areas. So this kind of got mixed, messed up, messed up, but we're going to sort of go over that with our center embellishment. You could, of course, use colored pencil to shade around those instead, but I, it's kind of fun to use the pen as a shading tech, as in a, in a shading technique. And then what I'm going to do, because I messed up here, I'm going to do a little bit of thick and thin line. It's what we call lively line. Kind of just here and there. I'm sort of staying on one side. That gives it almost like a little bit of a drop shadow. Okay, so now we're ready to shade. And shading can be very uh, dramatic with this. You can do it two different ways. I like to start out by shading the way we do with hala ball. And in hala ball, we have our, our sticks crossing over each other, right? And when they do that, the one on top would, if there's space in between them, there would be some cast shadow on either side. So this is on top and this is underneath. So we wanna add some shadow to those areas underneath. This is creating that illusion of atmospheric perspective showing that there's air in between these two woven bands. This one sits higher, right? The blue one sits higher atop the brown one. 
the brown, well, in this case, the brown one is atop this blue one, right? And then we'll just take our tortillon and blend that out. If I can find my tortillon. You always want to blend towards the light. Oh, here I forgot, but that's okay. I have plenty loaded on my blending stump. One thing I forgot to tell you is before we started shading, we could have taken our kneaded eraser or our Tombow in this case and lifted out those grid lines that we used as our original grid. It's easy to get a targeted erase with this, this little eraser. I love it. So that, that's one way to shade. You can also shade in that um, you would lift these completely from each other by shading all the way around that inside of one of the, of the squares or the rectangles, whatever. And that will pull those up as well. Let me show you. So they'll already be going over that um, area where we, we shaded before. But you see how this is lifting the bands away from the background basically. So it's quite a bit more dramatic than if you just left, left it. Um, so. And then if it gets a little bit dark in areas, you can just take your kneaded eraser. This is dark, pretty dark here. You want to always have a lot of light, right? You want to always save out your highlights. Let me finish this one so we get a really good idea. So depending on whether you want a more open and lacy look or more dramatically backlit kind of a look with this this more full shading is up to you. you you're the designer. And 
and then I would take my charcoal pencil, my white generals, and add some highlights right in the middle at the high point, right? Where you basically have that bridge. Kind of the top of the bridge. And then I'm going to put some charcoal in the center, or you could use your jelly roll. But since this is what I have right here, that's what I'm using. And then I'm going to take my Pertune designated for white and blend those highlights out a little bit so they're more incorporated in look a little more natural. And there is Betwined. So let me show you a few of the things that you can do with this. It's such a great versatile pattern. Um, as I did here, you can fill in those negative spaces with line work. Um, you can treat each of these bands as a separate patterned entity. So instead of, let's say that this is the blue, right? Here's our blue band. I did um, Knight's Bridge there. And then on the other one, that little pattern called, I think it's called just beads and then just a few little flowerettes in the intersection. And as you can see on this one, the gridded lines are actually in pen. That was sort of a mistake, but you know what? I think it looks kind of good because it, it allows us, it gives us these little cross sections for the little florets. So that's another example. I love this one in which I made the centers all gemstones. So this is kind of like a, a chain mail from an armor, from a knight's, Knight's armor. I just love that look. And on this one, however, then you do not want to have your diagonal line. The first diagonal line that we put in into our squares would have to be in pencil so that you could erase it to put a different pattern in here without seeing it. Otherwise, that line would be running through there. So that's an example. And then the big challenge comes when you try to do this pattern um, irregularly in like a tile, right? Like, like a Zentangle tile. So this was my string. It was string. It was this really irregular area. And so I just followed it along with my grid. And this is kind of what happens. Um, here's another one like that. And it's really a fun look um, within a, a Zentangle tile. So do play around with this. Have a lot of fun with Betwine. And I hope to see you next time. Thanks for joining me. That's it for today's Tangle. Thanks for joining me. If you like these lunchtime tutorials, please give them a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I also invite you to check out my website for classes that I have scheduled or to purchase my Tangle tags for your favorite step outs. That's bowtangle.net. I'm leaving you with some other links too. Zentangle.com, where you can learn more about the Zentangle method from its founders, Rick Roberts and Maria Thomas. You can also visit their store there for a multitude of Zentangle paper tiles, tools, books, and kits. Tanglepatterns.com is that site I talk about where you can explore hundreds of tangle patterns, read about them, and get the step out, which is basically the deconstruction of the pattern. And finally, if you'd like to share your beautiful results with me and my student community, please join Annie's Botangle alumni Facebook page. We're a private group where we inspire each other with our work, and offer tips and useful information about art and Zentangle.